All right, so this is a quick little tutorial on how to clean up and to finalize a logo. So in this case, I've created this horrible looking thing um, just for fun. Um, it has a red star with a fill, a red fill, and then there's another star behind it that has a yellow fill and a black stroke. And then there's this piece of stroke right there that kind of bites into it and it has a white fill and a black stroke, and it's really, really rough right now. And then same thing here with the logo, the, the actual word logo. It's a regular text, um, and I've just used a um, warp effect, just uh, the arch, just to, uh, you know, bend it backwards and kind of like this at the bottom. So it kind of looks like Lego, but it's not quite the same thing. So this is live type, right? So um, it's grouped right now. So there's because there's three levels of it to create to be able to create all those extra little um, strokes around it. Um, so it's just it's just quick and dirty, just to um, you know preview it for basically as if it was for the client. So the client would see this and go, oh yes, we love it. <clears throat> now it's time to finalize things. So again, so this is done in one, two, and three layers because it's just slapped together really, really fast. So this one has a very thick stroke, 30 point. This one has a yellow stroke of 20 point, and then the black one on top has none. So if I undo all that stuff to stack them up again, this is what we get. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this um, live like this as a, as a, a NARD board, as a reference. And then I'm going to go into my artboard right here, and I'm just going to duplicate that guy right there. I'm just going to drag it over and then make a duplicate of it. So I'm gonna, what I want to do is I want to do this, the exact same thing in this uh, artboard right here, but separate the shapes, separate the colors, so everything is, um, uh, well, uh, fills, not strokes and nothing crazy like that. So the first thing I do for any logo, um, make sure that you do not have live type. Uh, if you go into under view right here, and go to your outline preview right here. This is how you, so this, this is how it's, it's, uh, it shows. So you can see that this is a, an object right here, and you can see that the type is still it's solid black. So this is not an object. So it's live type. So if <clears throat> by any chance you may have bungee, that's the typeface I used. Um, you're perfectly fine working with a live type document. However, <clears throat> most people out there do not have. The typeface that you may use for the specific logo so you need to outline it first so i'm dragging across uh, all three objects right here and i'm going to go under type and create outline so at this point again now it is an outline but you can see that there's still an effect the warp effect uh, applied so this is what the uh, now what the type looks like compared to that one so it's not type anymore it's an object but I still have the effect on it. So I have to, you know, select it, go under object, and I go expand appearance. So now it has that curve. So but what I have is I still have the black one, I still have the yellow one there, with it's actually a fill and a yellow, and it's just all over the place, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna maybe create a layer so I can put things on a layer and I can lock it up or I can hide it. So that way I can, I cannot, I cannot select the black uh, part that is actually below, that is above actually. So I can turn that off right there. So what I'm selecting here is the, the, the element that is below. So what I want to do here, because it has that element right here, as you can see, it has a stroke and it's showing me multiple colors, but in multiple weights because it's been expanded. So what I want to do again, I want to go into my object, and I want to go into expand right here. And it's going to ask me to expand the fill and the stroke. I go OK. And this is what it does. So I'm just going to pull it off on the side right here and to show you what it did, what it did, right? So the stroke has been expanded, the fill have been expanded, and you have all those paths overlapping like crazy, right? So I'm going to move it back and play. Oh, actually, I don't need to duplicate it. So now what I want to do is I want to make that all that yellow shape right there, which shows me that it has multiple fields because there's, you know, there's there's a question mark in my uh, foreground color. I want to basically merge all of those shapes together. So I want to go into my Pathfinder right here, which you can find under your uh, your properties panel right here, um, or you can go under window um, under window right here, 
and you can find your Pathfinder right here as well. So there's two ways to access your, your Pathfinder. And what I want to do here is I want to unite it. So I'm uniting all those shapes. Basically, it's kind of like fusing, like a fusion of all those shapes together, fusing them together. So I click on that, and now it shows me that it's a solid color, not multiple colors. And the shape, I'm just going to move this out of the way, just duplicate it like this quickly. The shape is now a solid shape. It doesn't have any of those crazy, loopy, overlapping paths, etc. So I can delete that because I already have it. So now I have my yellow shape. My black shape is on top. It's again, it's in the layer right here, so I can, you know, hide it. And my yellow shape is right here. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to unlock that layer right here, layer two, and I'm just going to drag it up so to hide it. And I'm going to do the exact same thing again with that red shape that has a huge stroke on it. So again, um, my goodness, right there, object right there, expand, expand stroke, and you have all of those objects right there. And I'm going to unite it again with, with my Pathfinder. And now it's a solid blob, basically. So now if I show my all my elements right here, uh, this one is actually above the black one. So I'm going to right click on it, arrange, and then send to back. Now if I show all my layers right here, I have all of those elements and there are three of them. So, so three of them are overlapping. So there's the black version, the black object, I should say the yellow block, and then the red block behind, and they're only fills, right? So what I want to do is I want to keep on going with that. I'm going to actually bring the red above again, same thing. I'm just going to move it to the back. I'm using a shortcut right here. I'm just going to hide that. So I'm just going to work on that for now. So what I want to do is I want to have that red piece that you see here on its own, but just about that thickness, not not the whole blob like that. So what I want to do is I want to do this. I want to copy that yellow piece right there. So I'm going to Command C or is it Control C, I suppose, on the PC? Command C, and then I'm just going to go sh quickly right there, and I'm going to go paste in front. So I have the exact same yellow shape on top of the red one, and I still have it selected. And I press my press and hold my Shift key, and I select the red shape behind it. And again, I go back to my Pathfinder, and I go minus front. So the yellow piece that is above will basically punch a hole through it. And now that's exactly what it did. It just created just an outline of what it was. So just as, a, as an example, just going to duplicate it right there. You have your yellow shape, you have your red shape. You select both, Pathfinder minus front, boom, you only have the red piece at this point. Right? Uh, so I'm just going to do that very quickly, again, right there. So I still have my yellow shape right here, and then I have my red outline. But again, same thing, I have my black overlapping my solid yellow, and I don't want that. I want to have the yellow to be, again, hollowed out out of the word logo right there, basically hollowed out out of the black shape, basically. So I'm going to do the exact same thing here, except if I do that, I'm going to copy that and paste it in front. If I select the whole thing, and which is basically four shapes that are grouped, I select my yellow shape together, and I do minus front, and this is what it did. It's perfect, just like that. So sometimes, um, if you have multiple shapes that are grouped, you it may actually just punch one of them all, instead of all of them. So you have to go individually and then split them and repeat basically the same procedure multiple times with your um, your minus font uh, tool from the Pathfinder. So in this case, I have my black, I have my yellow, and I have my red. So this is how you basically separate separate your color in, uh, in, uh, for a logo in Illustrator. So I'm going to show that again in this, uh, basically the same thing here uh, for the star. So at this point, I can lock that guy, I can hide it so it doesn't really matter, but so it doesn't get uh, modified and, and uh, by accident. And what I want to do here, it's the exact same thing. And here I have a red, red star, I have a yellow star with a black stroke, and I have this black stroke with a white fill, you know, so it's a bit of a mess. So I'm going to keep the red star as is for now, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that, I'm going to transform, I should say, that star, uh, again, with the, using the exact same tool, I'll go under object, uh, expand and expand the fill and the stroke and click OK. So again, they're grouped, 
right? They're still grouped, so you can ungroup that. And now it's a black fill, not a stroke, that is separated from the yellow fill. So what I want to make sure of is, again, you have, again, that yellow fill that goes all the way to the center of the original black path, right? And then the black path now is overlapping it. So I'm going to fix that later. But right now what I want to do is I want to do the exact same thing as I did for the logo letters below. I'm going to copy that red star and then paste in front so it's the exact same spot. Select the yellow star, add my layer panel, and then go minus font again. So now the yellow piece is just this. And by default, it moves to the front, right? So that's why it's above your, your the, the black outline that is in the, in the background right here. So I want to move it to the back. I'm using a shortcut just to move it to the back. You can right click on it and arrange move to back. Again, I have my red, my yellow right there, which is perfect, and then my black. So what I want to do again, same thing again. You know, you know I'm repeating myself. Copy that, paste in front of the for the of the black uh, black shape. Select the yellow as well, and then minus front. Why I'm doing the copy and paste in front? So I still have my original one that hasn't changed. So at this point, I have again that red shape, the yellow shape, and then my black. They're all separated. So what to do here in this particular case, it's the exact same thing, right? So this thing is overlapping and it looks great when it's on white paper. But what if you move the whole thing over on a color background, like for example, in this case on my pasteboard right here, I have a big white chunk, so I don't want that. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm going to expand. You tend to repeat yourself a lot in that in that type of uh, that type of exercise. Fill and stroke again, yes, please, and then ungroup, ungroup them again. So you can right click, ungroup, or use a shortcut, whichever, whichever. So now I have my black shape right here, and I have my white shape right here. My little indentation. And again, you repeat yourself. I'm going to copy this white shape first a couple of times, right? So I'm going to copy that first, and I'm going to go. Paste in front, right? So make sure that you know it's selected once. Copy that. Paste in front. Shortcut is Command F on the Macintosh. Select my red, uh, my red star minus front. Paste in front again. Select my yellow star minus front. Paste in front again. Select my black outline stroke or or star, I should say, minus front again. And there it is. So now I have. I go into my preview. I have my black has been chopped up. My yellow has been chopped up. You can see the indentation. My red has been chopped up. But I still have this that I need to merge, right? So in this case, it's pretty sloppy right there in that little corner. So I'm going to fix that very quickly. I'm going to trace a little shape right there with using the pen tool to match the, uh, this, the same angle right here. I'm just going to do that very quickly. It doesn't have to be perfect it's for demonstration purposes at this at this point. Um, I still have this. Ooh, I still have my my white shape there, so I can delete that. I don't need this anymore. So here I have this little black shape right here. I'm just going to make it a different color so we can see it better. Green, lovely, and and then my black shape, my black uh, indentation. So again, select those two. Use my Pathfinder tool again. Come on, there it is. Minus font, it. so it's now nicely chopped and, char and sharp. And all I have to do at this point, because all of that stuff is again, you know, overlapping. So I already did my indentation for my white, but I don't have the indentation for the black again, right? So the, the the black is overlapping. So I can, you know, again do the exact same thing. But what I can do here quickly is I can first select both black objects that create the star and the indentation, and then I'm, I unite it. Now it's just one big shape. And again, what are we going to do? Copy, paste in front, select the yellow, minus font. Paste in front again, select the red, minus font. And now you have a finalized logo with three little pieces like this. So what that allows you to do is once you're in, actually, I'm just going to move that into a different layer so we can do. I can demonstrate that. 
So now I'm going to move into that final layer, right? So this one is the, my working file right there. There's a bit of a mess, as you can see. This is live and looks like this. And then the final looks a whole lot more complex, but it's much better. And I will explain why. I'm going to hide that one or lock it, doesn't matter. The cool thing about Illustrator is you can go, you know what? I want to select that red there. And in anywhere you have that red, the same red applied throughout any document, any illustration. In this case, there's only two elements. But you can go under Select, Same Fill Color. And then it selects both red pieces at once right there. And because they're overlapping, and or because they're not overlapping, so I, and you can group them. Then you can group all of your red pieces. And again, same thing with yellow. Select same fill and see the se select same and fill. So there's also same fill, same um, appearance, blending mode, fill and stroke, stroke weight and stroke color. You have all those options. So when you're designing or working in a large illustration and you have a bunch of elements that are basically carrying the same um, graphic elements, such as a stroke or color, whatever, you can select all of them all at once. So I can go same fills, same uh, same fill right there. Group that. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I can press and hold my shift key as well. It selects two objects together. And then I use a shortcut command G or I suppose control G or yeah, control G or to uh, on a PC to group things, right? Or you can also right click on it and you have a group right here, which is right there. So now I can go, I have my black together, I have my yellow together, and I have my red together. And this is ready basically as a final file. This is ready for, for example, uh, to print on um, as a silk screen, for example, to print, you know, like to print on tote bags, on uh, to do some vinyl cutting, for example, as well. Um, because a vinyl cutter will just cut just that shape. You know, you won't overlap all that vinyl of the red in the background because it's a bit of a waste. Some uh, vinyl shops might do the whole background, for example, as a red, and then they overlap it, so it's a little bit safer than trying to line things up. Um, but if it was a laser cutter, if you have, you know, any of those um, uh, of those uh, machinery, such as embroidery, for example, um, the embroidery will just embroid just that red, and then just the yellow here. Right? Oops, I missed it. Just the yellow here. So that's how a final logo is, and that is again, it's a graphic. There's no type attached. It's separated, and now you can, if you want, you can group the whole thing, and that's your final version compared to your live and finished slap together options right there that won't work so again you see the little white indentation right there and then that does not have any the another quick little thing as well is once you have your color logo established you know usually you start in black and white because if it works in black and white it works in color again i'm going to um, duplicate that artboard again uh, so I have the content uh, duplicated, but what I want to say, you know, I want to go, hey, you know what? I'm going to make a black and white version of this thing. So all the red that I have here, and uh, group that. All the red now, I'm going to make it go black. I don't know for some reason my palettes don't open. There you go. I want to make it black, and all the yellow here, I want to make it white. And there I have my black and white version. And literally, it is black and white. It still has that white core around it, right? So this is a black and white version. So I'm just going to duplicate them on the side here. And what I want to what I want to do here is I want to do just a black version. So I get rid of the white, and then duplicate that one again. And now it's all of all of that is black. Now I can go make it white. So I lose my my streak right there. That is you know that is the cool effect of of this original logo right there. So in this case, it's not exactly. Uh, well set to be a black or white logo only. Um, it's not exactly set properly, um, but as you can see, it works in color. And then when you switch into a single color, you have that problem. So this is part of the reason why I want you to guys to develop your logo first in black and white and say, you know what? Hey, that stroke that I have right here, a little indentation that I want that to be visible, right? And so how is that going to work when you have that? So in this case, I'd have to fix a couple things, um, but this is how you work and develop a logo fairly quickly in this case, because it's just for demonstration purposes, and this is a horrible, horrible looking logo. Absolutely horrible. Don't do this.